Hey everybody, Jenny Sanzo here. I am so excited. I was right before this call, I was on corporate's version of this and I was like double checking my notes to make sure I had all the things. And there's a lot of things that happened over the last couple of days. So that's exciting, but it can be overwhelming. So the thing that I want you to do right now is take a deep breath. You do not have to know all the answers to all the things right away. The important thing is that you are feeling motivated and you are feeling excited and there's a lot to be looking forward to, right? But here's the thing, you, you can't waste this opportunity. You have to get into action and do one thing at a time. So what we're going to do tonight is some people who are at Monations in person are going to share some of their takeaways, kind of what their experience was like. And then if we miss any of the announcements, we're going to go through and make sure you know all the things and kind of a plan of action in order to tackle this one bite at a time. So you're not feeling overwhelmed and you're feeling motivated and excited and ready to take your business to the next level. So the first person I want you guys to hear from tonight is Nicole Vargas. She had kind of a different Monations experience this year, but it was super powerful. So I want, she's going to do two things tonight. She's going to share her experience and then she's going to share her action plan because she kind of like broke this down into chunks and how she's going to attack this to avoid that overwhelm and to avoid like analysis paralysis. So I'm really excited for you to hear from her. Hello. Okay. So who else is like so ex like exhausted in the best way possible. Like I feel like I could sleep for a week. Um, so my nations was amazing, but like Jenny said, I had a much different experience than I anticipated. Um, and in order to kind of give you guys the full like picture of my takeaway, I'm going to go back a little bit to December, 2020, I was coming off the most amazing year in my business. Um, my team exploded in 2020, my business exploded in 2020, and it all culminated in like the most amazing month. I double ranked to hit MM. I had a ton of double and triple ranks on my team. The bonuses were insane. I was like eight months pregnant. It was New Year's Eve. And I was like down to the wire, like an hour left trying to make it happen. And it happened. And it was like amazing. Like you guys have all had those moments regardless of rank, right? You've all had like that moment. That's so big. Okay, January 1st hits. And from that point forward, the wheels slowly started to fall off. As the year progressed, things just fell apart. Um, I had my daughter in February. The last month of my pregnancy was really hard in January. I had my daughter in February. So I was trying to get used to being a new mom of two. Um, you guys know how that goes. <laughs> um, and then, you know, I just kind of had a series of things happen in life. Um, I lost my grandfather. My dad was diagnosed with cancer. Um, I went back to work in May. I have kept my daughter home with me to try to do my nine to five and watch her during the day and do my eight. Um, my husband and I got hit with COVID very hard, got hit with strep a couple weeks after that. Like it, it was just a rough year. And I know that we've all had a rough year. Um, we've all had a lot of heaviness, you know, in addition to personal stuff, just all the stuff that's going on in the world. So fast forward to um, a couple of weeks ago, I knew my nations was coming up and I was having a really hard time deciding if I was going to go or not just with everything going on. But my mindset, you guys, for lack of a better word was complete shit. And it had been the entire year and I could not pull myself out of it. No matter what I did, I just kept allowing myself to be buried in it. And so I had this moment of clarity where I'm like, you need to be at Monations. Like you need to be there. And I'm like, okay, that's what I was waiting for, right? For that voice to kick in and say, this is what you definitively need to do. So go to Monations. The first day was amazing. Those speakers, you guys were out of control. It was incredible. And although I knew that what they were saying was incredible, there was something in the back of my mind that kept saying, but not for you. Yeah, those things are true, but not for you. Not, you're not good enough. They're, they're talking to everybody else in the room, right? And so as the day went on, that voice got louder and louder and meaner and meaner, you guys. And, and I was like five, four, three, two, wanting the crap out of it. And like, I would get rid of the voices for like a second and they would be back with 
a vengeance, like a couple minutes later. And by the time Friday rolled around, I was sitting in that stadium or arena and I was like in the worst headspace ever. I just could not pull myself out of it. And it was actually getting worse. People were on stage saying these amazing, incredible, inspiring things. And I knew that it should be lighting a fire in my belly, like all the other Ma Nations, but it was actually doing the opposite. It was burying me. And I almost felt like all these amazing things that these inspiring people were saying were mocking me. Like, this isn't for you. Okay. I had that same negative voice in my head. They talked about Miami. My first thought was, I can't do that. I'm never going to hit MM again. Like, this isn't going to happen. I didn't qualify for Punta Cana. I never hit MM again. I didn't get my Cadillac. My PV was in the tank, getting lower and lower every month. You know, VIPs had trickled to a, a crawl. My team wasn't growing. And so I'm like, oh, well, that's never going to happen for me, right? They talk about caddies. I'm like, I'm never going to get mine. It was so bad. So then they announced the new AEDs and are parading across the stage. And you guys, the entire arena is on their feet, celebrating and cheering, right? And I am sitting in my seat and I start to cry. And I sit there and I silently sob while these AEDs are walking across the stage. And God bless Mel. I think you're on this call, but she just quietly put her arm around me and just squeezed me. And I sat there and I cried the whole time. And thank God I'm nursing because I had the excuse to get up to go to the pumping suite to pump. And I sat in the pumping suite and I pumped and I listened to the power couples on stage as I was pumping and crying. It was ridiculous, you guys. So when I was done pumping, I thought, you know what? I need to remove myself. I need to go back to the hotel room and I need to deal with this. So I went back to the hotel room, turned on the shower, turned off the lights. You guys, we've all been there. We have all had an ugly cry shower, okay? And I had the ugly cry shower of all ugly cry showers. And I sat in that shower. I had a clogged duct, which is where the shower came from. <laughs> Um, and so I sat in the shower and I leaked milk and I cried. <laughs> Sorry for the TMI. My team is used to it. And I had one of those gut wrenching chest heaving cries and I cried and cried until I had nothing left. And at the very end, when I was about to get out to pull myself together, to rally for dinner and the night that I had planned for my team, I heard this very clear voice in my head that said, this is your inflection point. Now, I don't know if you guys remember, but Ray talked about inflection points as a company and he showed a graph, right? And he showed the ups and downs of the company over the last seven years. And we are as a company at an inflection point. And he talked about how inflection points, while they're lower, right? They are an opportunity for growth. And what follows is usually massive growth. So I get out of the shower, I towel off, I look at my phone. I had sent two text messages that were very meltdown, one to Jenny, one to my husband. I had already been in contact with Jenny, but he hadn't had a chance to respond yet because he was at home dealing with my crazy kids and my crazy dog. He had responded, you guys. And I want to read a portion of what he wrote to me because it will live with me forever. So I actually have to swipe out of the Zoom for a minute. Um, so he said, you got to where you're at for a reason and the continued growth needed to get to the next level is going to be hard work. Some of that comes from self-reflection and this moment might be a part of that step forward. This moment is building resiliency. It's exactly what you need to continue growing yourself and your business. I promise you won't remember what exactly was said on stage or who said it a year from now, but you will remember this feeling and what it took to overcome it. And that's worth the trip to Atlanta in itself because that's a lesson you'll carry forever and be able to pass on to your team when they need it. So you guys, I have been to four Ma Nations and this was by far the most valuable and important Ma Nations of my life. And I now have this very clear picture in my head of me being on stage as a director, telling this story to those people in the audience who are having a sit down and cry during AED parade moments. And that is my takeaway. Okay, I'm gonna try to like could get myself together here, but so I obviously cried the entire time Nicole was talking because it's who I am, and I I've, I've been there. Like I've 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 hit the rank to never see it again. Like I've watched my business fall apart multiple times, and what's hard to convey 
And, and what's hard to see that first time you dig yourself out is that you can dig yourself out. Once you've done your, dug yourself out, you, you're like, okay, I can do this. This happens. We're going to do it again. But it is so hard as a leader when you see your people stuck and you see like unlimited potential in them and they can't see that like it's just from here to here and they can do it. Um, And so much of it, like Nicole said, comes down to mindset and it's okay. It's okay to not be okay at points throughout this journey. It's okay to have the cry, to feel discouraged, to be, to feel defeated. You just have to be able to get yourself out of it or you'll never know what's possible and what's on the other side. So, and I think too, Jenny, uh, like going off of that, a big part of it for me was I was feeling this and then I was guilting myself for it. So on top of already feeling it, I was putting this immense pressure on myself for feeling it in the first place. Like I wasn't allowed to feel it. Right. Because There's this big thing about like no negativity and never let a negative, you know, negativity in. And what I learned with this is that negativity is, is a sign that you have work to do and that you yes. need to grow and you need to heal. So I don't condone letting it hang around, but you need to take a look at it seriously and dig really deep to try to find out where it's coming from and how you can heal it. And, yes. and I am ready to do that now. Like I am, I have removed myself out of that, that pit. Yes. And I can now see this is what I need to do. Right. And I feel, I feel like I've been through the fire and now I'm fortified and now I Mm -hmm. can do it. Yeah. And those of you who are like, I have no idea what they're talking about. Like here, here's my pep talk. It's coming at some point. You're going to be in that place where it's like you either jump swim or, or jump swim, you jump ship and figure out, or you figure out how to swim. That's not a great analogy, but I think you know what I'm trying to say. You either like give up or you persevere and do the, and do the thing. It it gets to that point. So I hope what you're hearing is it's okay to have something that you need to work through, because if you're not having those points where you're having to do that inner work, then you're not really growing. You're not going to get out of your comfort zone and you're going to stay here. If, if you don't get through those uncomfortable things where you can look at yourself and be like, Ooh, that is interesting. We need to fix that. So now that you, so Nicole, now that you've gotten yourself to a place where you're ready to dig in, you did the work, you, you recognize what was holding you back. How, what's your plan forward so that you don't end up overwhelmed? Cause I knew you shared that in our, in a chat this morning. And I, I really liked what you had to say. So, um, something that happens to me, I think it happens to a lot of people after every Mon nations is that there's so much to talk about that it leads to inaction. You just don't do anything because you're so overwhelmed. And for me, like with every other monations, it takes me three or four days before I start talking about things. And that's not okay. You cannot do that. We have to dive in and start talking about things now. So I wanted to come up with a system that I could teach to my team um, so that we could all dive in without the overwhelm. We are all super busy, just like all of you guys. And so we need the organization to be able to lay it out and have a game plan. So what I did last night is I sat down and I made a list of all of the things from my nations that I want to talk about the product launches, gratitude, VIP points, Australia, whatever. Right. I made that list. And then I went back through that list and looked at each thing and thought to myself, okay, who do I want this information to go to? Because it's not all appropriate for everybody. So a lot of people put together one mass email with every single thing that was announced at Monations and send it out to their VIPs. You guys, imagine if you're that overwhelmed, your VIP is going to open that and be like, oh, hell no. And click the little X in the, in the top of the, the screen, right? So we don't want to do that. So I, I really took some time to look at each thing and thought, okay, this is something that I want to go out to, you know, whatever, my VIPs, person to person, my VIP group, Instagram, and maybe like, you know, whatever, right. I I sat down and kind of like figured out who and where, what platforms as far as social media. So I did that for the whole list. And then this morning I took it back out again and I looked at it and I thought, okay, so this is who I want to talk to this about. What do I want that to look like? Do I want to do a reel? Do I want to do an IGTV? Do I want to do one-on-one reach outs? Do I want to do a Zoom class? Do I want to do an in-person event? Like what serves this piece of information the best? And then I go back through the list again and I figure out when I want to do each one of those things. So each topic, I'm addressing it a couple different ways, right? So for instance, like right now we have a sale for this hair care 
um, line. So I started with that. So I um, did a couple things. I went live in my VIP group. Um, later tonight, I will be doing a live on Instagram that I will turn into an IGTV. Um, I am going to also spend some more time going through. I have a customer list that I keep. And in that list, I make notes. So if somebody mentions to me like, oh my gosh, I use restructuring, I love it. I make a note of that. So I'm gonna pull that out and I'm gonna do a keyword search for restructuring. And I'm going to personally reach out to every single person that I know uses restructuring to let them know about this. I'm also gonna do a keyword search for heat protectants for the people that I know that use heat protectants because this is for them too. I'm gonna do that. I'm also gonna tag all of those people in this IGTV video that I make, okay? So that's my game plan for that. I'm going to do that same kind of thing for each topic. And you guys, just because something was announced at Monations doesn't mean you have to talk to your people about it right away. Focus on what's important now. For instance, I'm not going to talk about VIP points until I think they said it's launching in October. I'm not going to do a big thing on it now. I'm going to focus on what's coming out now and soon. And then I'm going to save that for October. I did a little, you know, sneak peek, like teaser in my VIP group and on my stories at Monations. And now I'm not going to talk about it again. Um, so, you know, you want to really use a targeted, effective approach so that you're getting this information to people in a way that is going to lead to conversion, whether it is conversion, you know, to a sale or to a customer or an MP, maybe that's not working the business that this is going to spark something in them. So it's just about being intentional. It's about being organized and kind of laying things out um, so that you're, you're disseminating this information in a way that's actually going to do something. And that's my game plan. Thank you. That is so helpful because it really does like you go from your massive scary list into an action plan. And how am I going to tackle this? And it's going to look different for everybody, but not feeling like you have to, like I said, know all the things, communicate all the things immediately, because then you'll just vomit all over the place and no one will retain anything. But I want to take a little bit more time and have you hear from some more people who were there and what their biggest takeaways were, what, like if there was a certain speaker that they resonated with, if there was one thing that really got them excited, I just want you to hear from a couple more people who were there. So let me see. Um, Rabia, I see you. So I don't, I don't know if you're ready, but I would love for you to share. It was your first Monations. Sure. So, um, Nicole, that explains where you went because I would turn around and I'm like, where's Nicole? Where did she go? <laughs> I had to pump like every couple hours. So I would just like disappear. The people sitting like outside by the aisle probably hate me. <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh my God, where'd she go? Okay. Anyway, but I mean, all of your feelings are very valid. I, okay. I'm a market partner. I haven't ranked the few VIPs that I have are literally my mom and like friends and family who like don't buy consistently. And when Lori invited me to Monations, I was like, oh my God, this is going to be so much money. Like I, and I, on the plane, I met some girls like at the airport and I went up to them because they were in their Monique gear. And I was like, and I told them on the plane, I'm like, I feel like a loser. Like, why am I going to this? Like, you know, like I, I'm just an MP, like I'm, I'm nobody like, like, am I worthy to go to this conference? Like, that's what I told them on the plane. And they were like, don't say that. They were like, and they were just like, no, like it happens to all of us. Like you just have to keep going. And they're like, you'll see after this conference, you'll see, you'll see, just wait, you'll see. And I, and I, and I have a hard time like getting on reels. Cause I'm, I, I fall into this, like, well, I'm not as pretty as she is, or my makeup's not done, or I have acne. So I can't get on right now because my face looks like this or like, or like, I hate the way my voice sounds or like, and on and on and on. So I, I'm one of those screenshot this thing from Money Global and post it. And like, that's obviously not working for me. So Lori and I talked about how like, I need to get on more, get on Instagram more, be more present, build that trust, show people that I'm using these products, how they're working, what it's doing for my life. Like I started because I had lost my job during the pandemic and Lori had put Lori and I know each other from a previous job and she had posted, does anybody want free samples and who doesn't love a free sample? So, and I didn't try the VIP. I just jumped in and became a market partner. And so that, that was like the biggest thing for me. And then I have a full-time job. So 
even this, this past week, like I didn't take Thursday and Friday off because I only have 10 days of PTO for the year. So I was like, I don't want to take two whole days. So I was taking meetings in the middle of our lunch break. So I like took meetings in the stairwell, um, for work because there was no other quiet place to go. I didn't want to run back to the hotel and get my laptop. So I literally stood in the stairwell and took two meetings on Thursday and I could still hear the speakers, which was great. I didn't miss a lot, but I, I was like, even scared to tell Lori that like, I had to take those meetings, you know, but I was like, I, I'm like, I need my full-time job because you know, that's, what's paying my bills and it's, and I'm single. And that's another thing I feel like I fall my here. I see myself doing, I'm like, I'm not a mom. I don't have kids. I, I you know, like I'm always like comparing myself to like other people and I just need to realize that self-development is not for cuckoo people. And I need to like start incorporating that into my life to be, to, and not, and I, and I keep telling myself that I don't want to be average. I want to be better than average. So like Mel Robbins said, like not hitting that snooze button, getting up in the morning and just getting after it, you know, and then I'm, I always make excuses. I'm like, well, I have a full-time job and it's more important and this and that. But then I see those girls up there and I'm like, some of them are younger than me you know, and they're, they're making so much money and they're younger than me. And here I'm like hustling for a job in corporate America to work for somebody else, you know? And, and I, and I came home so inspired, you know, and then, and then I was, and then I, before that I was asking girls, I'm like, well, what rank are you? Well, what rank are you? And like, and then everyone was like a rank higher than me. And I'm like, this is just never going to work out for me. Like this, you know, and like, I'm that girl on social media and, and like, people were getting pissed off at me this weekend. Like they were commenting on my stories and being like, it's not over yet. And they're like, oh my God, what about COVID? Is everyone not wearing a mask? And like my one cousin who lives in Canada was like, oh my God, it feels like you're on a different planet. And then, you know, but your haters are just your fan club in denial. So bring it on, you know? And I don't know, mute my stories if you don't want to watch me, you know, but it was just, it was more people like being jealous of like how great it looked and how fun it was and how, how great these speakers were and like how this is like not a joke and it's a real thing, you know? And then a lot of the stuff that like all the speakers spoke about is stuff that you can apply to the rest of your life too. It's not just about shampoo, you know, it's about being a better person, adding value, being consistent, you know, building trust with your customers and ultimately like changing lives because it could be a couple hundred dollars that you need for something that could turn into so much more, you know? No, I love that. And it's, it's one of the reasons I'm so passionate about this business, because the way I look at it is like, even if you do this and you decide, you know what, it's not my passion. It's not my thing. It's never going to be my full-time job. I'm, I love what I do it is still going to add so much value to your life because it is just a culture that you get to be a part of that is so inspiring and so uplifting and encourages you to be the best version of yourself. And there's not enough of that out there. Like, and it's funny, like, I know I always feel this way after an event, like you're in your little money bubble where everybody is positive that like when you're back in the real world and everybody's like, ah, you're like, oh, wait, yeah, okay. Like, and yeah. I think now like six and a half years into this business, I have edited my circle of influence so much that like I get, I almost get surprised when people are nasty. <laughs> because I have just surrounded myself with such positive, uplifting people. And that's what it's going to Monations is that experience on steroids. So Laura, it was your first Monations. Are you, I think you're on here. I know I saw your face before I went into speaker view, but if, can you unmute yourself? Yes, I'm on. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then Robbie, if you could mute. Um, like, so we don't have, there we go. Okay. I'll mute. So I did Monations virtually last year um, and Monations virtually was super inspiring. So when I went to Monations this year, I figured I kinda already knew what I was in for. Um, day one, Mel Robbins, I would say, spoke to my soul the most because, um, and Nicole and I have talked about this, but I finally got to meet Nicole in person <laughs> um, after talking virtually for forever. But 
when her business was going down, I was messaging her that my business was also going down, but I had a lot of things going on in life. Also, I secretly got married and no one knew I was planning a wedding. Um, we bought a house, we got all these farm animals. Like we did all these things that no one knew was, was happening behind the scenes. Um, so I was just blaming my business, not being successful on that, but I already knew deep down what my business could be because my business was there. Like I used to be in the top 10 every single month last year. I knew what my business needed to be successful. I just was making excuses. So Monations for me and hearing Mel Robbins was exactly what I needed. Um, I am a snoozer. So Robbie, I already kind of mentioned it, but I hit snooze a minimum of nine times in the morning. Like I have to set so many alarms to get out of bed, to get to work on time. And after hearing Mel Robbins speak, I woke up on my first alarm and I was just so proud of myself. I was like, I'm up on my first alarm <laughs> and I've continued to do it most of the time. Um, but max I've hit one alarm snooze instead of nine. So like major improvement. Um, so five, four, three, two, one. And basically like there are no excuses. So the biggest takeaway I had from Monations is literally just do the damn thing. Like you just have to do it. If you have excuses, you're never going to be successful in this business. And I knew that I just needed to be reminded of that. So, um, when I first started this business, I didn't have excuses. Like I was working three jobs. I was an ER nurse during a pandemic. Like I was working overtime. I was literally running myself to the ground and I still made time for my business. And I ended up in top 10 month after month. And then I started making excuses and my PV went down and my enrollment for market partners went down and my rank went down. So I already knew where I needed to be, but I just kept telling myself like, oh, life is kicking in, life is kicking in, but it wasn't, it was me. Like I was the obstacle. I was the only obstacle. When they told us in Monations to write your top three obstacles, like at first, all I could think about was me because I was the obstacle. So, um, really just do the damn thing. Like you have every tool now after they released all this stuff at Monations, you have legitimately every single tool that you could possibly need to be successful in this business. So just do it, like make the time. And since I've gotten home, actually, even before I've got, I got home yesterday, I've already had more VIPs messaging me. I've had my market partners who weren't active messaging me. Um, I've been reaching out to all my market partners. I've had new people interested in signing up as VIPs. Like my engagement already went from like being completely down to way back up to where it was before, just because I stopped making excuses and I five, four, three, two, one, just did it. Like I just did it. So honestly, if you want to be successful in this business, you now have every single resource possible that you need and you just need to do it. I love that. I think that was, and that's so funny, right? Like it is the simplest freaking thing. Five, four, three, two, one, and do the damn thing. I mean, this is not rocket science. It's so simple, but it really does make the difference. And I am a recovered snoozer too. So I, I feel I used to be like a nine, like in college, it was probably nine for sure. Um, kids kind of help break you of that habit because they don't ever leave. So like you can't hit snooze on the children. So you like that, that helps break that habit too. But five, four, three, two, one is probably a little more enjoyable. I think Dana, Dana, are you on? I think you're my last one who wanted to share, but I don't know if you are on. I am scrolling through the faces. Yeah, I'm on. Okay. All right. Yeah. I'll mute myself. Hi, guys. Um, you know, I can totally relate to all of this, all of this, because um, I'm a snoozer. Definitely. I'll admit that. But I like the 54321. That's, that's, something that um, I've been working with for a very long time. I, only a few of you know me, but another aspect of me is I'm very spiritual. And that part of fear I've been trying to face for a very long time. And not always feeling like I fit in too, um, especially with all of you young girls. <laughs> um, I've, I've always felt a little uncomfortable because I'm so much older, but um, you know what? Everybody was great. Everybody made me feel comfortable there and lo and just was very supportive. And um, I even met new people. So I kind of hung out with some new people there too, which is so cool. I have friends all over the United States from, uh, from doing this. Um, but also um, 
The biggest takeaway, I think definitely five, four, three, two, one. And the, you know, the one common denominator I kept hearing from all the speakers was keep it simple. Um, I tend to be pretty technical as a hair, hair stylist and uh, very passionate when I speak. And I do get that glazed over look from people if I just throw too much at them. So I feel like I took away that keep it simple. Um, so I'm really trying to uh, put together a couple of different simple um ways to approach people instead of being so long-winded and um i call it um um what is the word i don't know speaking uh diarrhea <laughs> i guess it's the best way to <laughs> word vomit explain it <laughs> yeah word vomit there you go <laughs> um I'm really, really excited about doing, you know, kind of jumping back in. I think I let fear definitely get a hold of me this last year. I think a lot of people did too. And um, I think it's also, I came away from that fear aspect of all of that too, to um, understand that it's allowed me to be more compassionate uh, for people that are still in fear um, as well. So um, yeah, the biggest takeaway with Mel Robbins, I just love her, and um, to keep it simple. So, and I love, um, uh, Nicole, what you've kind of put together, so I'm definitely going to implement some of that as well, um, and stop snoozing, <laughs> pressing the snooze button. So, yeah, that's, All right. that Thank was it. You. I just love that. Yeah. All right. I just, I appreciate you girls who shared tonight. It was it was so hard for me to not be there, um, as I'm sure you all know, especially because I don't really feel that sick anymore. Like I missed Monations once before, but I was so sick that I couldn't even like contemplate it where this time it was just like, I was run down and fragile and didn't have the energy and like, it was hard. And I was really hard on myself about it too. I have a very hard time giving myself grace. And, um, for a lot of reasons, like I, I felt, I felt like I was letting you all down cause I couldn't suck it up and make it happen. And then, and then I felt bad for feeling bad that I wanted to be there. And I was sad that I was missing out on all these things. Like I was seeing the director dinner at the aquarium and I watched the MDC inductions where it was nine people instead of 10. And I'm sitting here eating ice cream, watching it on virtual. So it's okay to be stuck in your feelings. Sometimes the thing is you five, four, three, two, one yourself out of them and you do the work when you need to. So I just want to recap the big announcements from my nations. Um, and, and then you can take this list and do what you need to do using Nicole's method. And then Stacy is going to wrap us up. I know this went longer than I thought, but I think it was really, really powerful. So um, I have no problem with that. So what did we do? We did the two things that Forbes says like are the, the secret sauce to business explosion. And we did global expansion and a product launch. We did both in the same day. So we're launching Australia October 1st. And we've got product launches in all three product categories. Right now, the one you want to be paying attention to is damage repair because it's already available to the public and it is on sale. So damage repair is available now. Body care is coming. Vegan protein is coming. Enhancements to the VIP program coming in October. That points program is going to be huge. PayPal is coming later this month. It's available in Ireland. The rest of them, the rest of our countries are getting them at the end of uh, September. Director Summit in, in Mexico. Um, MMB and above Leadership 500 in Miami. There's new matching director bonuses. We're getting a new app. There's the shampoo dealer certification. There's John Maxwell mentorship at the director level. We've got a million dollar gratitude program that just started. Um, we've been challenged to do a thousand events in a hundred days and Monation's 2022 tickets are already on sale. So again, that is a lot. You pick, you pick the things, you pick your own takeaways. Like those of you who shared your story about my nations and what that meant to you, I really encourage you to share that, not just with our team, 
but share that on your social, write something up, go live or if, if going, if you don't want to go live, put, put some stuff together, record it, make a story out of it, but share your heart. That is what is going to connect with people and make them curious, share what you took away from the speakers and how going to this convention had an impact on your life. Again, I love what Robbie has said about how, like, even outside of money, like what you get is so beneficial just for life in general. Um, I think, I think that's, I'm going to stop talking now. Cause like Stacy's going to wrap us up and, and bring us home. Cause I know she hated not being there too. So we were in the same, we were in the same boat. Yes. Thank you, Jenny. Um, hi all gosh. It's so good to see your faces. Um, when I'm done talking right before we hang up, I want to do the whole, like, high five thing and take a picture <laughs> because that to me, was just genius too, um, that Mel Robbins said. All right. So the, the way that I want to just close this out other than, you know, saying experienced all the FOMO, it was awful. I mean, I didn't miss like a, a minute of it other than like, you know, maybe being distracted, making lunches or something in the morning. Um, really hard not being there. I've, I've been the last four years to Monations. Last year we had our own Monations in the middle of COVID. It was amazing. So it was tough. It was a tough decision, but, um, and I won't miss another one ever again, but it, you know, it, that's the way the cards fell. That being said, after we have been in this business for so long, a lot of these faces that I see on here have been like since the beginning, right? I'm coming up on my five-year anniversary that like tomorrow, I think, or something like that. Um, and you do have these ups and downs. And I feel like that was kind of like the general theme of Monations. Um, I was kind of like, I, I got back into town yesterday. We did our own little tiny, you know, get together to watch it out of town with some local girls. And I got back into town yesterday and I was kind of going over just like my thoughts with my husband. And he said to me, and I had to write it down because I was like, that's just genius. He said, "States, the thrill of being an entrepreneur is the roller coaster. And I was like, oh my God, because no, it's awful. Like, you know, <laughs> like, that's the worst part. But he's like, flip that switch and tell yourself like, that is the most exciting part. Those challenges and those setbacks, because Lord knows we've had them all. You guys may look at like us directors and think like it's smooth sailing, but it is, it's almost worse because when you fall, you fall far and it stings and it hurts and building back up. I'm, I'm looking at Ravia thinking, oh my God, like being a market partner where you get to start fresh. Like that's, that's awesome. There's no pressure. Um, so I want you guys to know that like, you know, no matter where you are in your business, like it, it's all up from here. And, you know, when we've been in for this long, I'm constantly analyzing. And I know Nicole does this too, because we've shared how we're similar in this way, but you're constantly looking back at your business and you're going, what did I do in the first year that worked so well? What did I do in the second? What am I not doing now? What the heck is going on? Why are people not growing? Why is my team struggling? Why am I struggling? Why am I not signing market partners? And you're constantly trying to like, diagnose what's wrong. And like 90% of the time, you guys, it's in your head. And one thing that I noticed, um, kind of thinking, being like outside monations and looking at it, the speakers are amazing. The, you know, pyrotechnics and the shows and all of that is incredible. But to me, the number one thing that monations offers everybody and why they leave so fired up is because they are connecting. It's all about the energy and it's all about connection. And I am going to call this team out and say, we have not done a good job connecting over the last like six months year. Um, I feel like in the beginning of COVID, we were like all fired up with Zooms and parties and this, and then we just went wah, 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 wah. And then when things opened back up again, everybody got busy with their lives and like we just dispersed and we stopped connecting. And every time we got on training, we'd say, let's have events and let's do this, but it never really happened. So I am calling out everybody, myself included. This is the best turnout we've had on anything in a really long time. I know a lot of you guys are at Monations on here, which is why you're here right now because you're fired up, but it is your job to go back to your teams and, and, and get them just as fired up, get them connected. Michelle came over to my house. We had a, um, a, uh, like a, a watch party on Thursday for the afternoon, um, session. And we were talking about just how important it is. Like she made a drive, like from an hour away or more. Um, and, 
it's just so important to get face to face, whether you can do that with your local teams or connect with sidelines, like a coffee meetup, whatever it is to stay plugged in, because you all know that when life happens and you get busy and you're not staying plugged in, it's really easy to forget about Monet you don't know what's going on, then you're lost. You're like, I don't know where to start. Some of you guys on here, um, I see your names and you, you know, you've been around for a while, but like really haven't done much, just like I haven't really in the last couple months. And um, you kind of might tell yourself like, I don't even know how to start to plug back in. So let's come together. Let's make it a commitment to like support each other, get active in our team pages again, really connect with each other. Because you guys, when you hear Liz Lugo up on stage, who got to direct her in seven months is like living, you know, the, the millionaire lifestyle, but you hear when she admits that she fell from director, lost her title, which you guys, if you don't know what that means, that means you don't hit your rank in a whole year. Like it, you don't get paid as a director in a whole year. It, it's not like you lose it like from, from the next month. Like it, you, you did nothing to grow in a year. And for her to admit that and tell everybody that that's huge. And that is exactly what happens. So it's so important that we all hear those stories and we share our triumphs and we share our struggles and we share like what Nicole said, listen, like I, that, that's how my first Monations was. Like I, I looked at those girls up on stage and I was like, I'm going to be up there next year. And then when it didn't happen and then it didn't happen and it didn't happen, you just start to go like, oh, it's never going to happen. I'm never going to get there. And so Wherever you decide to take your Monate business, I think the best part about this is the connection. So I don't know, Jenny, I think we just need to be like as leaders, very, you know, like make these meetings happen, see each other's faces and hear your stories. You know, it doesn't always have to be the technical, you know, what's going on with everything and all the sales. Like it can just be like, what are you doing to, to win and celebrating and, and, um, I think that that's like the secret sauce of this whole business. And that's what keeps people excited. And that's what keeps people wanting to do it. And I'm talking to your, your teams too, you know, getting them to stay for the long term because this is a business that you can have like till you die basically, and then you can pass it on. Yeah. So even if it starts to fall off, you have to tell yourself like, this is the best opportunity. Like, I mean, if we didn't just see that, like what this family does, and that's another thing you guys like, I know I'm going long, but like Luis Ferdinetta to hear again, like we've heard his story over the years, but to hear like he, you know, newborn baby lost it all and had to tell his wife, guess what? I'm going back to like knocking on doors and selling Tupperware. And she's like, I'll do it with you. And he's like, how are we going to do this? We have a baby, Let's stick the baby in the car, go knock on doors for somebody like that to build many million dollar businesses fall again, rise back up he is going to be successful forever. He's instilled that in his kids. So you know what that means? That means Monet is going to be successful. It is going to be the top MLM and we're all part of that. So every single time you see them, you're just like, ah, oh, we're in such a good spot. Like they are going above and beyond. And you've seen their wives. I mean, they want like the best of the best. They, they're not gonna accept for any Me Too products or anything like, bogus right so that's my spiel i'm super excited to see all you guys i'm excited to plug you know i kind of like whipped myself a little and put my monate pants back on and i'm ready to like you know get back into it too no more excuses no more life sucks and like the world's ending and oh my god like it's all about helping other people okay. feel beautiful look beautiful amen yeah no and that's like i'm it's funny like i think we're both in a very similar point in our businesses and our mental attitude. Like, okay, enough is enough. I am not, I'm not staying in this place any longer. It's time to get back to community and what is really important. So just want to point out, Danny commented in the chat. Um, and I forgot to say this, if you do an event in September and you register it, like you get like an event pack and those are going to be, um, there's going to be elevation tour toolboxes in resource library tomorrow with like PowerPoints and all kinds of stuff for you to be able to host your own event. And again, an event, it can be in your living room. It can be at a coffee shop like this. You don't need pyrotechnics. You don't need like a Cirque du Soleil group. You can just like have lemonade and cookies. Okay. It does not have to be a production, but we have to get together. Like that's what's missing. 
Um, so as soon as we start doing that again and people realize how awesome we are and they want to hang out with us, they'll join the business just to hang out with us. That's how we all got to where we are is we made it fun and we made it a, a team and a culture that people wanted to be a part of because it was different. And that's our secret sauce. Our secret sauce is us. So it's time to get it back and get to work. So oh, should we take a picture? Oh, okay. Yeah. Let me put it on. I'm going to put everybody, mine on. Um, everybody turn your camera on for a second. <laughs> I'm gonna do this too. We'll post it and tag Mel. Yes. Okay. So your sorry. hands are up so you can see on the camera. Okay. Oh, that's awesome. I love it. Hold on. I got to okay. click to the next uh, screen right. now. Okay. Right. I want to get everybody, but now I can't see myself and I don't know where my hand is. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was special. That was special. Okay, I'm going to stop recording now.